Welcome everyone, KD here and in this video I want to show you what you have to consider before starting creating your own game. The first step, step to create your own game is to know what game you actually want to create and for that you have to define the game concept. Just to remind you, creating a concept doesn't mean you can't do any changes later on if you feel like it, but it will help you to stay focused on the important things and may prevent you from having to do important changes in a very late development status. I can't tell you how exactly you should build your game, but I can give you tips and recommendations. However, the last choice will always be yours, and you may want to get some other opinions before you make your final decisions. If you don't know at all yet what game you want to create, here a short tip from me where you can get some inspirations. In general, any game can give you this inspiration, however, I would recommend you to mostly look at retro games and indie games and avoid AAA games. AAA games are made with much more resources and manpower than you could probably afford and they are made for a different crowd than gamers that like indie or retro games. You won't compete against AAA games. If there is a game like Red Dead Redemption coming out, an indie game, even if it's a really good one, won't change the sale for a AAA game one bit, at least for now. AAA companies go further the way they are going now, this may change. Indie and retro ga gaming is bigger than ever, and there is a reason for that. Also, I personally think, from game design point of view, indie and retro games offer, offer you much more. AAA games offer very rarely something new, most of the time they just copy what it is trendy right now. While with indie games, um, people have less resources, so they have to get more creative to make an interesting game experience. Before going deeper, let's first look at the important points a game concept should include. There are three questions. You may want to have at least an idea of an answer to it. Number one, what type of game do you want to create? Number two, how should the game play? And number three, how does the game look? To number one, what type of game do you want to create? What is your game's genre? What is the story of your game? Who is the general audience? And what is their expectation for such a game? If you create an action shooter like Call of Duty, the general audience isn't interested in a complex, deep story and don't want to go through lengthy cutscenes. They want to jump into the actions as fast as possible. If you create an RPG, on the other hand, the narrative is very, very important. The general audience wants to know about the world they stepped in, the characters and the possible threats you have to fight. It won't be enough to have generic soldier guy uh, moving down thousands of enemies without a real explanation or because terrorism or something like that. The audience expects more from the story in a slower paced game like an RPG type of game. And other example would be horror. If you create a pure horror game, you want to attack the player's fear itself, give him jump scares, dark corridors, and the mystery of the unknown. What is the threat and why is the player character or almost the player himself in these situations? Answer this question slowly and as late as possible in the game. If you watch a streamer playing such a game, you want to hear him scream. On the other hand, if you go more survival horror, the fear is different. The fear is that your player character can die, that you can fail at any time and that you have to do maybe the whole thing over again. The player has to check his resources all the time because then he never knows what comes next. He has to take risks to get health pack or ammunition and so on. So the fear is something else. The fear is more the fear for your player character, the fear to fail. While in poor horror you really attack the 
players fears itself I hope you understand what I mean with that it is important to know your niche for your game find the genre you want to make your game in from the beginning and stick to it one of the biggest problems I personally have with AAA games is that they don't know their niche anymore the best example is a game like GTA 5 is it a racing game a shooter, a first person shooter, third person shooter, a cover shooter, is it a beat em up or maybe even a platform? Or would you call it a crime simulator? Well, probably not because there has to be a portion of realism in it for it to be a simulator. It almost feels like AAA companies, companies want to avoid to define the genre of the games, to sell them at as, at as many people as possible. And you may think now, well, I want to reach as many people as possible. But again, AAA games are not the ones you can compete with. You are much better off to choose a niche and you may attract a smaller crowd like this, but a much more passionate crowd. You can also see it like that. I like beer, chocolate and steak. That doesn't mean I put them in a mixer and eat them together like that. I want to enjoy them separately. And I'm talking only about things here I like. Now imagine something is in the mix I don't like. I can't separate it from the odd things anymore. If you mix different genres together with a different audience, you risk that half of your audience will hate some parts of your game and the other half hates other parts of the game. They may give up frustration traded on your game because you promised them a shooter and in the middle of the action you took their weapons away to let them solve a complex puzzle or something like that. Stick to a genre is my recommendation, my strongly recommendation. Or at least mix genres together that have a similar audience, like put the stick on a pizza or the chocolate in, a, in vanilla ice cream and the beer into vodka or something like that. <laughs> Horror, survival, shooter of any kind, racer of any kind, beat em up, RPG, action adventure or even point and click adventure, anything goes. You don't have to invent the wheel. Again, there are so many interesting genres you can build your game in and you don't have to invent a niche for creating your own game. If you think you found a new niche, think about two things. Is it really new or maybe just maybe someone already thought about it and realized that it won't work as a game? And is there a crowd that is interested in it? This may sound a little bit absurd in a world with farm, bus and train simulators, but maybe, just maybe, there is just a little bit too few people interested in a game like stamp collector simulator or something like that. Not only choose a genre for your game, you also have to know the genre and the audience well. I told you, you don't have to invent the wheel again, but that doesn't mean you can't make your own wheel or add new things to it and offer people a different game experience. Games like Mighty Number no. 9 and Yokolele should be a warning that it is difficult to build a game only on the, nostal on the nostalgia factor without offering something new or different. For that I can only recommend you to know your audience well. The first step to do so is that you, you yourself should be part of the audience. I can only highly recommend to choose the genre of your game not based on popularity but because you enjoy this genre yourself. If you like point and click adventures and you are worried that no one else wants to play such type of games anymore, then I say to you, go for it. Create your point and click adventure and create a game you would enjoy. If you like this type of games then trust me, there are others out there that also will enjoy it. I just can make my own example here. Since I played Final Fantasy VII for the first time, I'm an absolute fan of turn-based JRPGs. I strongly believe because of this affection for this type of games, I'm more than suited to create a new game experience in this genre while honoring the games that came before and, then and on which the genre is built on. I want to create a game for fans of JRPGs. This is my niche audience and I want to try to get 
something like hardcore shoot defense or anything like that to play my game. Or even alter the game design to give them something they may enjoy. There is no point in that. People like different things and you can't please everyone and you also don't have to. Here are some genres I would recommend you to avoid. And these are in general multiplayer based games and games that need to be online like Battle Royale or MMOs. The reason why you should avoid them are the following. You have to think about server cost and maintenance and also you have to think about cheaters or just trolls that want to take the fun from other players. You have to be pre prepared for this type of people that want to exploit your game. Lastly and maybe most important this type of games just need a core audience for them to work. You won't get any new players if your servers are empty all the time and the concurrence is big and strong. Just think about how many Battle Royale games were developed in the last year and how many of them made it and still are played. How many MMOs popped up after the success of WoW and how many of them are just unsupported wastelands if they even exist anymore. And I'm not even talking about indie games here. Uh, but also companies with resources and big talents. Again, I won't tell you to not do this type of games, but just be aware what it means to make a multiplayer game. Number two, how should the game play? This is a massive complex question and maybe the most important one. It is only at second place because you can narrow it down after you have chosen your genre. Also, you don't have to know every nuance at this point, but having a basic concept is definitely needed. The rest could be different ideas you wrote down in a brainstorm or something like that, and you may want to come back or will evolve these ideas while you work on your game. Again, answering some detailed questions can help defining your game concept. <coughs> How is the player experience the game? Is he controlling a character or just a hand that can control AIs with commands? What perspective does he see top down from the side, first person, third person? What is the goal of the game? To beat the high score or finish a story? What are the challenges for the player and what tools do you give him to beat them? Does the player have to find a way to a maze and the challenge is time or fitting puzzle pieces together with the help of simple controls or maybe physics? Are the challenge enemies that get stronger and, and you give different ways to defeat them? Has the player to master different skills so he can defeat the monsters? How is the world built? Is it made with levels or stages with, with a clear start and an end and you have to beat the level to get to the next? Or is it built with multiple maps that are connected with each other and you can go back and forward between them. Or are you going open world? Again, I'm not saying you can't do it, but if you want to go open world, I have some tips for you. Despite the festa celebrity Ron Howard saying We always start with the world. My recommendation is to do the complete opposite. I know you don't have to take my word for it. Bethesda has many more experienced de developers working for them than me. But maybe if you consider what buggy hellholes Bethesda games in general are, you may at least consider to lis listen to me in this regard. If you build a house, you start with the foundation and not with the roof or the summer terrace so you have a good view. The foundation of your game is, in my personal opinion, the game mechanics. Game mechanics are the tools you offer the player to solve the problems and challenges you lay out. The world gives the player directions or limitations in which way he can use these tools. And it is quite difficult to create these things if you don't know how the tools will work or what the challenge actually is. Even if you build a house, tools you use will change the way you build it and this changes the result. 
If your challenge is to put two pieces of wood together and your environment has a lot of nails around, but the tool you gave your player is a screwdriver, then you have a problem. Yes, you can get your player a hammer, but that may change your game design completely and offer him new and maybe easier ways to finish your challenges. So you have to change challenges because of that if you know from the beginning that your only tool is a screwdriver and because of that you have to create a world with screws, you will avoid a lot of problems. In video game terms, if you build your world first and your final goal is for the player to reach a platform high in the sky, but he can't reach it because the character can't jump as high, so you give your player the tool of double jump. What may solve the final challenge, but now because of that the player can reach areas he couldn't before, areas you don't want him to reach or areas you actually had another more difficult way planned. And so the changes start, just because you build your world first without knowing the possibilities and the limitations of your tools first. Long speech short, first build your game mechanics, test them in a small environment, and as soon as they work as planned, you always can go big, bigger, start small and expand the world with the tools you created in mind. Number 3. How does the game look? Finally, let's talk about graphics. And what an important aspect you should consider before, first before jumping into creating your game. There is not only the choice between 2D and 3D, and I'm not saying that because there is also uh, 2.5D. The amount of dimensions your game has is only the first choice you have to make. If you go 2D, you can go pixel art for a retro look or for a drawn 2D art and animation. If you choose 3D, you can go from simple 3D forms to photorealistic HD graphics. Again, I'm not telling you to not do anything, I just can do recommendations for you. But maybe think twice if the effort you put into creating photorealistic graphic is worth it. First, you won't reach the same level of AAA companies. They have access to the newest technology and the resources to use them. The other problem is that going all out in graphics often will wash down any artistic style of your game. And it will look like many other games that, come be that came before and will come later on. A rather just to you to use an unique, recognizable art style, and then you can even use low poly objects. Minecraft is a very famous example of that. When it came out, it had a very simple but unique art style, and it is still, up to date, one of the most recognizable games out there, even with all the clones. Another example is Final Fantasy VII. I often hear that graphics of Final Fantasy VII are outdated. Even for the time the game came out, I strongly disagree. The graphics are unique and the strange looking characters are part of the charm of the game. Every time I see a picture of Final Fantasy VII I am filled with nostalgia. I like how the game looks and I wouldn't want it to look any different because it is so recognizable. And there are many more examples out there. If you have an unique looking game, people will be much more forgiven if the graphics are simple. Even better if the gameplay is great. If you don't think you can pull off an unique and charming art style for your game but you don't want to go photorealistic, there are of course alternatives. Going for a cartoon or anime style is another option. It may need some more time to create cartoonish or anime characters in 3D. And you have to invest definitely more time in learning how to do them than a simple uh, art style. However, it is still much easier and forgiving than photorealistic graphics. If you go photorealistic, you also have to consider the animations. If you don't have any access to motion capture technology, it will be a monster task to create animations and facial expressions that don't feel over the top or clumsy, or in other words, realistic. It is just much easier for the player to see the gap between graphic and animation quality if the graphic quality is high. On the other hand, if you look at anime or cartoons, people are used to over the top expressions and will forgive clumsy animation and so on much more. You have also the creative freedom to make your animations part of the art style. 
go all out but with realistic graphics there is only one way realistic animations I don't want to discourage you from doing photorealistic graphics I just want to tell you that you will put exponential more effort into the looks of the game going with a realistic art style and a satisfying outcome is not even then a guarantee you just have to know for yourself is this effort worth it or may there be an alternative route you can go congratulations you have now defined the major concepts of our game and did the first step in creating a game just remember that this doesn't mean everything is set in stone and can't be changed in the future However, it is important not only to have a vision, but also some clear points you can build your game on. This may help you to save a lot of time. Things like graphics can always be improved later on, but it may be very difficult to change some core game mechanics without breaking the game, or having to do time-consuming changes and bug fixes. Now with the first step in mind, we can come to the next step, in creating our own, our own game. And that's choosing the right softwares.